Hello, everybody. I'm Maddalena Lettino. I'm the past president of the Acute Cardiovascular Care Association. I'm in Italy and I'm going to reply to some questions the cardiologists could have uh, in this uh, COVID-19 era where the emergent situation is mainly related to the infectious disease. Italy had to rapidly, for example, increase the number of beds in the ICUs because of these patients who need mechanical ventilation. And uh, one of the questions could be what have we learned from this experience? And what is the situation of the acute cardiologic patients in this uh, pandemic uh, situation? Uh, first of all, we have learned that uh, cardiologic patients uh, are not so many in these times because most of the patients arriving to the hospital are actually patients with uh, uh, infectious disease. And probably cardiologic patients remain at home waiting until they have much more severe symptoms uh, to go to the hospital. The number of beds dedicated to, uh, to COVID-19 infected patients are definitely many more than the number of beds dedicated to cardiologic patients. And this is a common fear that is around our patients uh, in these times. We had to change the organization of the cardiovascular emergency network because uh, uh, we couldn't have so many cardiology departments available for the current patients, being most of the intensivists and doctors in general dedicated to the COVID-19 infections. So uh, keeping in mind the model of hub and spoke, still we have several hubs. In Northern Italy in particular, they have been reduced by 75%, more or less. These hubs receive patients from many more spokes than before and still are trying to maintain uh, intensive care beds for them. Of course, the total number of intensive bed care, uh, intensive care beds available for cardiologic patients are much less. But in this way, it's much easier to organize the transportation of patients and to staff also the cath lab to be available for primary PCI, for example. One of the other questions that you might have is, for example, what is the incidence of STEMI patients among the ones who have been infected with the virus? Actually, when the patients are in the uh, common ward, they are mainly non-invasively ventilated and the EKG monitoring is really, really very low. And these patients usually are much more affected by their respiratory symptoms than by any other kind of, uh, uh, of symptoms. So these patients uh, so far have not attracted the attention of cardiologists so much. When they are in the intensive care units, mechanically ventilated, uh, if the situation is going worse and worse and the uh, severe respiratory failure is becoming more and more evident, uh, the development of a multi-organ failure is the natural consequence. So they could have also some changes in the EKG, they have some uh, alterations of troponin, but so far we haven't had acute coronary syndromes in these patients, or at least uh, they have not been uh, uh, brought to our attention. Probably uh, even uh, uh, the heart involvement is much more related to the virus. So it's difficult to say what is the mortality of uh, infected cardiovascular disease patients, uh, but for sure cardiovascular disease patients uh, have a worse outcome. The mortality is much higher in cardiovascular disease patients than in patients without any cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately, the mortality is even higher in uh, cardiovascular disease patients compared with hypertensive patients, 
we, who have a higher mortality compared with patients without any risk factors. The, the grading is patients with no risk factors, lower mortality, patients with some risk factors, higher mortality, and patients with cardiovascular disease, the highest mortality. Another question is related to uh, whether there are other cardiovascular disease that could be uh, an emergency and uh, uh, who develop uh, uh, while uh, the patients are affected by the COVID-19. Actually, we don't have any clue about myocarditis. Still, I, I point out that this is an infectious disease mainly characterized by an interstitial pneumonia and what we see in terms of alterations of troponin is really much more related to uh, the ischemic situation or relatively ischemic situation secondary to the hypoxia for the respiratory failure. So it's difficult to see patients really developing uh, a situation that is much more related to a myocarditis than to the respiratory uh, uh, failure. While uh, we don't see arrhythmias or conduction disturbances more than uh, in the common uh, situations, and this could be considered an indirect sign of uh, myocarditis. So again, we don't have indirect signs of myocarditis in these patients. Much more difficult to say whether patients with a COVID infection uh, develop an acute heart failure or a cardiogenic shock that is primarily related to their cardiovascular disease. Actually, in the very uh, advanced uh, um, stage of the infectious disease, the, uh, the, 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 the heart failure is uh, almost always uh, associated with the uh, respiratory failure, and it's really difficult to interpret the CT scan or the chest rentgenogram where the images are quite similar, no differences uh, between the, 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 the pneumonia and the acute heart failure. Some other questions. We uh, were wondering whether uh, we have a different epidemiology of patients arriving to the emergency department now in the COVID era. We have seen, and this is an experience of many cardiologists, a lower number of patients with acute coronary syndromes arriving to the hospital. The number of STEMI is uh, much higher than the number of non-ST elevation, and this is completely unusual. We were used to see many more non-ST elevations arriving to the uh, emergency room or directly to the cardiology department. Uh, and this was due mainly uh, to the fact that the patients were able to recognize their chest pain and to arrive to the hospital as soon as possible. But now patients who do not have any symptom of infectious disease tend to stay at home. So the number of non-ST elevation is much lower. The number of ST elevation, of course, is uh, relatively higher, but still the total number of patients arriving is lower. And this, in some way, is well um, matched with the lower number of hubs that we, are, uh, we have active in, uh, in our country. The, the, the hubs so far, even they have been reduced by at least 75%, still are managing the total number of patients with acute coronary syndromes arriving. The most difficult thing is the general chest pain. Many patients with the COVID infections arrive to the hospital uh, complaining chest pain because they have chest pain related to the upper respiratory uh, airways. And so uh, sometimes we are called, we cardiologists are called to the ER to deal with these patients and to try to recognize whether their problem is cardiologic or they have a very early stage of the disease. And this becomes more and more difficult if you think that a lot of doctors have been devoted to the care of COVID patients already admitted to the hospital. And new professionals are nowadays stuffing the emergency room. And sometimes we have only surgeons or we have very young doctors and they, of course, tend to call many more times that an internist or the previous uh, or the previous doctors. 
Moreover, we don't have time to have, for, exa for example, a second control of troponin and just leaving the patients in the emergency department where many other potential infected patients are arriving. So we are trying to uh, find the pathway that allow the patients to um, be sure that he is not a patient with a COVID infection, try to um, select the patients that appear, we say, clean without the infection, and put them in the cardiology ward waiting for their second point of troponin or for any other tests in order to maintain these patients separate from the patients who arrive with an infected problems. Some other question. Should we screen all patients requiring primary PCI um, or arriving to the ICCU um, as potential positive patients? I must say, for patients arriving from the field, from patients brought by the ambulances, when it's not possible to ascertain that the patients didn't have any respiratory problems, did not have any fever, did not have any relatives affected by the disease, it's much better to consider them as positive patients. It's easier to uh, put the patients in the cat lab and use in the cat lab any kind of protection and deal with the patients like an infected one or bring the patients to the isolated beds within the ICCU. It's the best way not to diffuse the infection and to protect also the doctors who are doing the procedures. And this is potentially the premise of another question. Should we protect all the doctors dealing with these patients as the patients are always infected? Yes, going back to what we have said just before, all the doctors receiving for the first time these patients should dress themselves like dealing with patients with a COVID infection. The, 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 the stuff uh, present in the cut lab should be duplicated because some of the professionals will stay close to the patients and so they have to be particularly protected, but at the same time, they have to exchange tools and materials with some other who are not straightly in, straightly in contact with the patient. So it's particularly important to do some arrangement in the cat labs, some arrangement in the ICCU. For example, the ICCU not always have a negative pressure for the ventilation inside the ward. So this is one of the first things that we have done in Italy to uh, create the condition to be able to isolate some beds, some boxes, some rooms in order not to diffuse the infection to all the other patients when the uh, general ICU are completely full of patients affected by COVID. Which are the main take-home messages that I could uh, give you summarizing what I have said? Of course, the worst complication of this uh, virus infection is pneumonia and the acute respiratory failure. This is the, the most relevant things in these patients. And so far, we haven't seen so many cardiovascular complications. Usually, they are only the last effect of the initial infections. But still, we are convinced and we see every day that patients with pre-existing cardiovascular disease or sometimes patients having only some of the main risk factors for cardiovascular disease have the highest mortality. And so we have seen currently that uh, apparently patients with acute coronary syndromes deserving primary PCI with ST elevation and non-ST elevations are fewer than before and arrive to the hospital much later than before. And unfortunately, this is related sometimes with much more complicated procedures and, which, and with much more uh, development of heart failure and cardiogenic shock in patients that actually do not have the infection. So in this case, we see many more complications for the cardiovascular patients. My suggestion, 
My suggestions are to treat every acute patient coming to the cath lab or arriving to the ICCU as they are positive patients for the current COVID infections. The other suggestion is we have significantly reduced the number of hub. We have significantly reduced the number of ICCUs and this was uh, uh, mandatory because otherwise we could have assisted all the COVID patients. But in these beds, we uh, should try to maintain the, 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 the ward as clean as possible with really few well-isolated beds for the uh, infected patients. Because in this way, we can assist all the cardiologic patients who do not have the infection, are frequently much more complicated and need to be allocated in the right place. Be sure that you have a sufficient number of cardiologists because it's necessary to do urgent procedures. Be prepared to have much more complicated procedures. Make sure that many cardiologists are available to treat patients and to send them home as soon as possible. And so to make their stay in the hospital the shortest. And finally, of course, uh, uh, not only internists and uh, other doctors are dedicated to COVID patients. We are giving uh, some of our cardiologists to help the, the pool of uh, professionals dedicated to COVID-19 patients. And in this case, cardiologists, as all the other doctors not used to deal with infected patients, should be well-trained, should to protect themselves very well and to be prepared because so far we don't know actually whether we will be able to have the same possibility we have so far to assist patients with cardiologic disease who haven't not yet been affected by the infectious disease. Thank you very much for your attention.